coach has been here for 20 more. So, um, the, only, the other thing that I'm worried about, I don't know how many people are going to be in here today. And is there going to be 20 minutes worth of questions? I don't know. And if, they, if, they, if the questions dry up, I'm going to let them go. But we'll still have to keep them hold them because the breakout is still in the start. Yeah. 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 I don't think Coach will. Go to the breakout rooms, yeah. Yeah, over by the loading dock. <coughs> the lock. Can they turn me on for just a minute? Thank you. You're welcome. Testing, okay. Good afternoon, everyone. As we wait for uh, Kansas State to make its way up here, let me just remind everybody of the schedule for today. Uh, this press conference will begin at 2.50 and last until 3.30. Um, the five student athletes will be released at 3.10. Uh, we'll ask for an opening statement from Coach Weber and then we'll go to questions for the student athletes. We'll release them at 3.10 or until there are no more questions. Uh, the Kansas State locker room is open from 2.50 to 3.10. 250 to 310 for the rest of the team and then once the student athletes uh, leave here they'll go to their breakout rooms in the loading dock area uh, from 315 to 330 315 to 330 and the the spaces allotted to each student athlete are their signage that will indicate which student athlete is in which space so uh, a couple other reminders Please silence your cell phones. Um, no flash photography or live streaming of these press conferences is, is permitted. Uh, satellite coordinates are available on uh, documents that are placed on the tables around this room. Uh, when you want to ask a question, please raise your hand so we can get a microphone to you. Uh, can't take a question unless you have the microphone handy. And then also please identify yourself and your media agency uh, when you're asking a when you're asking a question, we not yet. Okay. We'll we'll pretty much we'll follow the same format for uh, Loyola once they're once they uh, get here as well. Their press conference begins at 3:40. Their media availability begins at 3:40.
testing, one, two, one, two. Okay, everybody, we'll get started. Uh, Coach, if you could give us a couple opening thoughts, and then we'll get uh, questions for the student athletes uh, for the time that they are in here. Well, obviously, just uh, excited to be part of this, to be, you know, to move on to the Elite Eight, uh, you know, and, and, you know, it was a very short night, long night, uh, but, you know, and the thing I emphasize, these guys, they, they really got to kind of bl block out everything that's going on around them and really focus on preparing for Loyola. And, uh, you know, we got to be in the it worry. We can't worry about what happened yesterday. Can't worry about next week. We got to take care of business right now. And uh, they've been so good at focusing uh, and, and really taking into the game plan. Um, and that's got to that's got to be there uh, tomorrow. And you know we've got to get our mindset right, our heart right, and and you know play at a high level tomorrow because they're very good, uh, tough. Thirty one wins. Yeah, I don't care what league you're in. It's it's uh, that's big time. Uh, what thirteen in a row, twenty out of twenty one, something like that. And and then they seem to make a lot of big plays, three game winners, and, and since they've been in the tournament, and so we have a tough challenge ahead of us. Raise your hand and we'll get a microphone to you. These are questions for the student athletes here for the first 10 minutes or so. And please, uh, please direct your questions to specific individuals as much as possible. Third row here on the right. John Hale with the Courier Journal. For any of the players, there was some controversy about the handshake last night with Kentucky. Were any of you offended by that? And, and kind of what was your vantage point on that situation? Barry, why don't you start with that, please? Um, well, I mean, I, I think we were just cheering too much. and. Uh, didn't really get uh, kind of organized to be able to get in that line and, uh, and, and shake their hands. And so um, maybe they just uh, just walked off just because they didn't think that we were going to uh, get organized and be able to shake their hands. Let's go to third row on the left. Tim Fitzgerald, GoPowerCut.com. Barry, there was a great video of you hugging Ernie Barrett in the uh, locker room. What, what does he mean to you guys, and what did he say to you, and how important was it for you guys to get the vindication that he wanted so badly? Uh, it means a lot to us, to this program, to uh, the K-State history, and um, I mean, he's been to a lot of our practices just to, to, to be there and see the hard work we put in. And so uh, knowing the history and knowing uh, him not being able to play in, in the game versus Kentucky, and um, we just went to go out there and just uh, do it for him. And, and once, we, once we got it done, I knew he was so proud, he was so happy, he just kept saying it in the locker room uh, and in the huddle, just hugging everyone. Um, and so ultimately, I think we all did it for him. Fourth row, third seed in. Kellis Robinette here with the Wichita Eagle, Kansas City Star. A question for Xavier. Um, Coach touched on this a little bit last night, but has playing the four opened up some things for you as opposed to playing the three in this tournament? Uh, I believe so. You know, just spreading out the court more with more guards on the court uh, helps uh, help us out a little bit. And just, just having it, um, different different points of attacking, you know, we still have an inside presence with Mac and Barry and be able to um, dribble and drive to the hoop. And, of course, we have shooters on the court at all times, so I believe it helps us out a lot. Fifth row and toward the back. Nubias Wilborn, Sporting News. Cartier, you being from South Carolina, um, Cartier, um, how's it been having probably more family being able to be closer to seeing you play here in Atlanta than maybe they would be in Manhattan? Um, it's been uh, great. It's been fun. Um, the the fan support, the the love, all the people that. Um, went to school with and grew up with getting to come see me play has been it's been a joy but you know just uh enjoying the moment living in the moment and uh ready to get this next one sixth row on the left uh, Myron Metcalf ESPN for for Barry you all were here uh, back here you all were oh. in this position when you played the hot mid major in UMBC and you know they were winning games they were dangerous now here you are playing Loyola in a uh, similar situation. Do you think the UMBC experience maybe helped this team kind of refocus and realize, you know, the challenge ahead? Um, I, I guess you can say that. Um, I mean, we know that. Um, I mean, every, every team right now is trying to make history, and uh, I've been talking to my guys about uh, just making history of K State, worrying about us, and uh, worry about we, what we can do to uh, stop each and every uh, opponent and respecting them, and um, just going out there and playing K State basketball. Questions for the student athletes. Go ahead again. Uh, Barry, what is K-State basketball? Um, first off, it's defending. Uh, we take a lot, of, a, a lot of pride on defense. Uh, Got to get better rebounding uh, once we get that stop. Uh, pushing ball transition, making the right pass, playing for each other. Um, 
just just make an open play, stand confident, no matter what the situation is, no matter what the score is, and uh, what's what's going on in the game. Just uh, staying together, uh, never getting away from each other, and um, picking each other up when we're down. Fifth row, Nubias Wilborn, um, Xavier. What, if any, is there like a moment with Coach Weber that's kind of like defined your experience with him, or just kind of getting to know him over this time? Uh, Coach Webb, we've been, we've been knowing each other a long time. You know, he recruited me. So just being around him all the time, getting to pick in his mind. He's a great coach, great guy. And, and just being around him, just being getting some of his wisdom is great. Raise your hand if you have a question. For the, Here you go, third row on the left. Cam, um, how plugged in are you guys to the history of K-State basketball and that for 40 years up until the early 90s, this program was at shoulder to shoulder with the Kansases and Kentuckys, and maybe what this game tomorrow means to the the older fan base and the history of the program. Uh, you know, I, I think that that win uh, yesterday meant a lot. You know, especially to the older fan base, like you said, and um, the people that played before us. Uh, we knew that we could compete with anybody in the country, and I felt like we showed that today. And we just got to keep moving forward. I mean, yesterday. But. <laughs> Who's got a question for the student athletes? Charles in the middle. Charles Woodham, Associated Press. For, for Xavier, there's been a lot um, said about the uh, greediness and toughness of this team. Um, when did you first see that evidenced in, 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 in this team? And, and that showed yesterday with the, the success late, even after all the foul trouble. Did you worry as the fouls grew um, last night? Uh, have I had confidence in all the uh, players and being able to step up in a moment. And but. I found out about that greediness of this team and back all the way in spring around this time last year, you know, just, just guys being in conditioning, uh, getting up shots after conditioning, dead tired, uh, doing all the extra things and just helps us to get to this point right now. And, and that greediness and fight really came, just came from each and every one of us and just having that desire to win. Go to the back left. Hey, Emily Gang on CBS 46 News. Last night, your coach said you guys only had 15 minutes to celebrate. Uh, maybe Stokes and Brown, you can answer this. What's the balance like of knowing you're so happy, thrilled to have gotten this far, but you really have to calm it down because you still have so much more to accomplish? Uh, you just can't be satisfied. You know, um, you made it to the next round, and you know you got a tough road ahead of you, so you can't be satisfied. You got to enjoy that win. Uh, like you said, it was for a short period of time, and we just got to focus on the next game. Very far left over here. This is for Barry, uh, Tom Martin, KCTV. With, with how much basketball is trending towards fast pace, chucking three-pointers, you guys really dig down for defense. Coach says you take pride in it. Why is that? What made you guys recognize that that was the type of game you all had to play? I mean, just knowing, knowing uh, their, style of, their style of offense, they like to uh, get up and down, use their length uh, and athleticism, just get easy run outs and dunks and uh, kind of make a lot of flashy plays. But uh, we knew that with our principles and uh, the things we've learned since I've, I've been here uh, my freshman year, uh, defensive-wise, that we could uh, guard anyone, uh, no matter no matter the height differential or uh, the, the weight and size. I mean, we knew that um, just being in the gap, uh, help, helping each other, helping a helper, and uh, rebounding uh, would be a big task. And we were, we were able to go, go out there and uh, do it. Back row on the left. This question's for Barry. What have you seen or what have you learned from uh, Loyola so far in your preparation for tomorrow night's game? Um, I see that they, 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 they move the ball a lot. Uh, they trust one another a lot. Um, got a lot of good pieces inside out presence. Um, uh, they, they have a, a good player in, uh, I think it's Custer. Custer, Clayton Custer, I think. Um, yeah, he's, he's a good player who uh, scores from all three levels. Um, and so it's going to be a, a great task to uh, defend him and, and do my best. Raise your hand if you have a question for the student athletes. We'll get a microphone to you. Second row on the left. Wyatt Thompson with Kansas State Radio. This will be for Barry and Cam both. This is your third year in the program. You guys have really grown in and through this. Was there a time where you felt like you, you could get to this particular point? If so, when would that have been? Would it have been this year or maybe prior to this year? Barry, you can go first. Um, I mean, I knew coming in uh, the program had some rebuilding, but I knew that with the pieces we had, we just needed time to uh, – to get a little bit of experience, gel together, and, um, and and come together and really buy into the program. And I feel like this year is the first year we have 
um, just that experience that we need and everyone buying into it and uh, um, not really worry about um, their own individual accolades and, and goals and stats and stuff like that. I feel like we're all really here to play K-State basketball. And so um, I knew this, this, this time was coming. It's just a long time coming, a lot of hard work and dedication uh, and preparation. But um, I, I knew it from the start. Cam? Uh, like Barry mentioned, uh, I felt like experience it was the biggest thing. Um, freshman year, we came up short. Uh, sophomore year, we made it to the tournament. Uh, didn't get as far as we wanted to get, and we learned from those situations. And I felt like this year we were able to overcome a lot of things just based off our experience. I have one more? <laughs> sure, go ahead. Okay. Cardi, I'd like to ask you about what is the most difficult part about this type of turnaround that is so quick? You're, as Coach mentioned, you're getting ready after the euphoria of last night's win. In such a short time, you're turning around and playing a team that's 31 and five. I think the um, biggest uh, turnaround is just uh, yes. you don't have a lot of time to you know scout. But uh, I just you know we have a lot of uh, faith in our coaching staff, and everybody does a great job. I know they stayed up all night, you know, uh, getting ready for it. But uh, we just have to be locked in in, in a little bit of time we have, and just be prepared and ready to go out there for a dogfight. Let's go back to the fifth row. Um, the bias will born again. Um, Cardio, you had mentioned, obviously, being from Florence, not terribly far from here, you had some people come in. Are you expecting even more? And if so, is there anybody who surprised you that maybe came and showed up that you weren't expecting? Um, well, yeah, I, I, I'm expecting some more. Uh, my mom came out, so that was, uh, that was nice. She, she, she thought she couldn't make it, but then she made it. So I was happy about that. So. Raise your hand if you have a question for the student athletes. Any more questions? Oh, here we go. Charles in the middle. Very kind of as a, a, a follow-up to that, uh, it was no surprise that there was a lot of blue in the stands last night. But now that you guys have uh, sent Kentucky home, are you kind of hoping maybe neutral fans adopt you? Or do you, on the other side, do you kind of wonder if uh, Loyola is the feel-good team, getting a lot of national pub in that respect, if maybe the Neutral fans here from Atlanta will kind of adopt that team. Uh, I don't really think it matters, uh, especially to me and, and and our players. I mean, we we played in, in super tough arenas. Um, but we we also uh, play in Bramlage, which is a, a a top arena. So we we know the home feeling and we know the the away feeling. Like like uh, you know we're near home. So um, I mean I don't, I don't really think it matters. But uh, we're gonna feed off the energy from our, our fans that we know are our fans uh, and just try and get this win. Raise your hand if you have a question. We got a few minutes, a uh, few more. Time for a few more. Fifth row in the back. Myron McAfee, ESPN again. For all five players, uh, do, what's the song that you play before you go out onto the court? Do you have a pregame song that's your favorite song? Did what you say it? all of them? Yes, I did. All right, Barry, start with you, and we'll go, and then we'll keep Sheesh. going. Can we start with Cardi? Can we start with Cardi? All right. <laughs> you start, uh, and then we'll come back this way. I've been uh, really listening to uh, Don't Give Up by Gunner. I can go Google that. Uh, for me, probably be uh, J. Cole, um, January 28th. I'll probably say uh, Drake, Look Alive. Uh, I don't know. He said what? Drake. <laughs> Drake, Look Alive. Drake. That's Black Boy. Black Boy. Cam, you got Black one? Boy. That's a family. Uh, I don't even think I have a specific song. Um, yeah, I don't even have a specific song. Uh, Me Ghost, something like that. I don't know. Barry? I'll probably say uh, I Get the Bag by uh, Gucci Man, uh, featuring uh, uh, Take Off and uh, Quavo. Bunch of crazy. We've got time for a couple more for the student athletes. Does anybody have another question for them? Raise your hand. OK, guys, I think we can let you go. Thank you very much. Okay, let's continue with questions for Coach Weber. Uh, Dan on the left. Ready? Yep. Okay. Hey, Bruce, uh, Dan Walken, USA Today. I'll let you finish your text there. Um, how sensitive 
have you been over the course of your career to criticisms about recruiting when you're not sort of operating in that, you know, five-star level? And is there any sort of extra satisfaction for you given, you know, all the controversy around the sport this year that you bring a team here that, you know, is not a team full of five-star type kids. It's been a more developmental type team. You know, I, I, I don't, it doesn't bother me. I, I obviously I'm human and, and I really try to stay away from social media, from papers. Uh, I used to listen to talk radio and then I became a head coach and I had to get, go to country, country music. So just to have something to listen to and not hear people talk about me, but you know, I, I just try to do it the right way. Uh, you know, we, you know, at Purdue years and years, uh, you know, as an assistant, you know, we, we got a lot of kids that weren't top 100, ended up in the NBA. We did the same. Southern Illinois took a, te- a sweet 16 with guys that, you know, weren't even recruited by other Division One players. Um, you know, Illinois, you know, I, I think we've done okay. They're, you know, there we did some special things, had some guys play in the NBA. And, um, you know, I just try to do it right the way, the way I, I feel it should be done. And, and um, I, I don't like what has, is going on in our business, to be honest. Uh, uh, you know, and, but it is, I just kind of, you can't do anything about it. Hope if, it, if it is that bad and some of this stuff comes out, it needs to be changed. And I hope it does get changed. And, uh, but, you know, all, all I can worry about is myself and making sure that uh, I do things the right way and help them develop, uh, you know, and, and I know when the paper comes on, uh, comes to your door, the, or the news comes on, my kids don't have to worry that I did something I'm not supposed to. Third row here on the right. John Hill with the Courier Journal. Oh, sorry. Me? Go ahead. Go okay. Ahead. Yeah, Bruce. Did you have any tr- any problems with the Kentucky players or coaches in the handshake line? I'll be night? honest. I don't. I I shook hands with everybody, and. Uh, you know, I don't know. I turned around and I don't, you know, I like the guy said, I, I didn't see what happened and maybe our guys were celebrating and didn't get there. Uh, you know, it's, it is, it's done and over with. It's such an emotional game for both teams. You know, obviously, you know, it's, it's tough, uh, you, you know, to try to keep your emotions. And, um, you know, I told our guys, you know, hopefully we act with class and, and do things right and, and, you know, well, all we can worry about now is what's coming up, and we got it. That's got to be our focus. Getting ready for Loyola. Bye, hey, hey, Bruce. Bye, hey, Gregorian, KC Star. Um, you, you, I'm sure on some level you've been conscious of the early skepticism of a segment of the fan base, and this is a little different than Dan's question. I, I just wonder how you process that in, in terms of their embracing you, and and how different it feels now to to turn this this way. I I, I don't know how you've contended with that through the years. Uh, you know, there's. No matter where you are, there's always somebody that doesn't like you. I mean, Judd Heathcote years ago, it's all you know. He, he always he would call me when I took a job. He said, "Well, you know, 10% of the fans don't like you, and it's going to increase every year." And and you know that's any job, and it's so hard with social media now, uh, faceless opinions that uh, you know can go negative, and 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 then that influences other people, even though they might have no knowledge. So. Uh, you know, it, it's part of it all. Again, all I can do is do my job right. Uh, you know, recruit my butt off. I think if you go and look, I I go out more days maybe than anyone else as a head coach, and and I've always done that. Uh, uh, you know, we recruit good kids, and and they graduate, and you know, for the most part, we've won. I, I think you go back at some of the greatest, uh, greatest part of Purdue's history, greatest part of Southern Illinois history, get a nine-year run maybe in Illinois history, and and now we're doing some we won a Big 12 championship that, that hadn't been done in 36 years, and, and now we're doing something special here. So, oh, I, I just, you know, it, it, it is what it is. Uh, I, I, just, I just care about our players, to be honest. And, you know, you got a guy, a hometown product in, or a state product in Dean Wade who's one of the best players in the country. I, I hope people appreciate that. And then our other guys, how hard they work and how they've improved. And I uh, hope they're cheering for him, to be honest. Second row, Jeff, on the right. Jeff Schultz of the Atlanta Constitution. Um, Coach, this whole upstart thing has obviously been a theme throughout the tournament, particularly this region. But we're going to have at least three low seeds in the Elite Eight, which seems extraordinary. As a guy who's been involved in college basketball for a while, are you surprised by this at all, or should we expect more of this in the future? I'm not surprised. There's such good balance. Uh, You know, you just look at our league, 10 teams. 
All of them probably could have been tournament play. Seven were in the NCAA, two in the NIT, and Iowa State, if they don't get a couple of guys hurt, they might have been in the NIT. So uh, you got you got such good balance. Uh, SEC, uh, you know, the ACC, uh, it's just – it, there's just so many good teams, and and it, uh, so much is matchups, uh, and and there's so many you know so many good teams not playing this weekend, and that's why I kept emphasizing our guys. I don't care how we got here, we're playing, and and you know UMBC beat the number one team in the country, Virginia. You know it just so they must be pretty good at least on that given night they are and that given weekend. Uh, but it's it's I, I think you've seen it more and more the balance. Uh, you know, the, the guys leaving early, uh, the teams that keep guys and, and, and get older, they have a chance of beating people. Our guys talked about experience as such a, a difference maker. And, uh, you know, so I think it's, it's part of college madness. It makes, it's what makes March Madness special. Way over here on the left. Coach Ryan Baker, CBS2 Chicago. What is your reaction to facing Loyola in the Elite Eight, a nine versus 11, given your history at Illinois, and, and do you feel vindicated as a coach somewhat based upon the way things ended with the Illini to be back on this stage? Well, I'm just, I'm happy for our guys to be here. It, it's just, this is a great group, and, and they, they've worked so hard to get here, and, and it's, it's, you know, I, I'm glad they're being rewarded, but they've rewarded, they've earned it. They've rewarded themselves by how hard they play, how they play together. Uh, to play Loyola, it, it uh, we can't. I, I told the guys, it, you can't look at the name, you can't look at the league. Uh, you got to look at the team. They're a good team, and you know they've already. I mentioned they beat Florida. You know, at Florida early in the year, they beat Tennessee, who won the SEC. They beat Miami out of ACC. So they 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 got to be pretty good. And and all you know whatever they've done here as of late, they're hot. They play together. They got great. Ex, you know they got. It's kind of interesting experience. But then they got some young guys that have really stepped up. And uh, I would, you know, you look at them, great togetherness. Uh, Porter's done a great job with them. They guard, they scheme, uh, they, they play off each other. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be a tough game. We, we're going to have to play special. And, and that's, that's what I keep emphasizing to our guys. Let's take one here in the back. David Haas, Chicago Tribune. Bruce, what kind of relationship have you had with Porter Moser over the years as your paths have crossed? I, you know, I've known Porter just, you know, obviously being in the business, being around him. He, we played one time. He was at Illinois State, and I was at Illinois, and we had to play our butts off. In fact, I, people that Illinois fans, that Darren Williams broke his jaw and we had it wired, and we weren't going to play him, but we were struggling, and Darren came, had to play with the wired jaw and pretty much uh, won the game for us. So, uh, you know, he, he's got – I know because of Tony Baroni, because of Coach Majerus, uh, you know, guys that he had – gone through and and you know I think he's got a little bit of both those guys the toughness the defense the scheming the discipline the shot fakes uh, you know all those stuff I watched you know those coaches do and he he does it and that's why they're good uh, you know he's he's a good guy for the business and I'm happy he got a second chance and and he's and he's been able to have success because as I said he's a good good person good coach we'll come to Vahe here and then we'll go over to the left Bruce, if I understood you correctly last night, I think you alluded to some things you might have derived from Coach Snyder, um, maybe particularly on points of focus. But I would just wonder, in general, uh, to what degree you've, you've borrowed from him or learned from him or been influenced by him. Well, I, one, it's, it's just when I got the job, uh, Roy Williams, I told the story, called me and he said two things. He said, first, it's a long way to the Kansas City airport. And he said the only – it was long to Lawrence – but the only good thing is, right when I got off, I saw the sign 94 miles to, or whatever it is, to, to Manhattan at that point. And, and I said, Coach, I'm sorry to tell you, but we have direct flights now in and out of the, and, and he said, no way. And I said, yes, we do. So we can go to Dallas and Chicago. But he said, the second thing, you better grab on to Coach Snyder and learn as much as you can. And uh, I think you guys know he's not somebody that's going to bring you in his office and but I, I, I've, I've gone in, talked to him, obviously just watching him, uh, listening to him, whether it's media, press conference, after game, being around. I, I learned a lot from our radio people, Stan and, and Wyatt, because they're around him so much and, and how he prepares and, and how important is the game, one game at a time, all that stuff. And, and, and believing in, you know, when everybody else, like this year, thought they had no chance and they go to Oklahoma State and all of a sudden they're kicking their butt. 
and he was the one who focused on the you know the game plan and getting them ready and and they those guys were ready and that's I, I I've kind of learned from that uh, there's no doubt about it uh, but uh, you know just amazing what he's done there and, and and he deserves his name to be on that stadium let's go way over here to the left uh, Coach Tom Martin with KCTV. I'm sure you've seen things in players who wound up playing at the next level in their college days that led you to believe they could. Do you see anything with Xavier, especially after a game last night, that kind of lends a, a glimpse at his potential maybe? Yeah, I don't think there's any doubt. Uh, he, if he continues to make the progress, it, you know, when the NBA guys come and we've had more come, you know, we've had obviously had West last year and, you know, we had some guys with Rod in that group before that and, you know, when they come and watch, uh, when they watch Wes, you know, right away they brought up Xavier, you know, and they obviously they look at athleticism, they look at his size, um, and, and he's got to make that progression. He took a big step this year. You know, he knows, and, he, and I've told a story before. He came into office, he said, Coach, don't even say anything when we had our year-ending meeting. I know what I need to do. I know how, it's, it's much harder than I thought, and i got to work at it. And, and I, I, th I hope he has the same mindset this year because – He's taken one step, now you got to take another step. And if he keeps making that progress, he has a chance to do it. Because of, Like Wes, because of his versatility and athleticism, uh, you know, he has a chance to, to play at the next level. Let's go back to CL here. CL Brown with the Fieldhouse. Uh, Bruce, if you could take us back to the 2014-2015 season when you kind of had the culture reset in the program. How difficult was that knowing that perhaps – by letting some of these talented players go that you wouldn't even be around to to finish it through and to still be coaching there? Well, I, I believe, you know, in doing things the right way. And I, and I said many times, K-State, Coach Snyder has created it. There's a culture there. There's a pride. There's a family. You know, when people say family, everywhere they are, you know, this nation, this family, it's truly there. It's special. Until you're part of it, you don't really realize it. And, um, you know, I, I've said we want guys that are, make K-Staters proud and uh, our guys weren't acting the right way um, you know a couple of them came I thought were pretty good kids and you know things happen in life and they changed and then a, you know another couple we maybe you know didn't look into it enough or or trusted people that uh, that were in their little circle that they were going to do things the right way and you know we had to we had to make a decision a hard decision and and but at the same time it was not fun to coach <clears throat> people have asked me, uh, you know, what's the best thing about this year? It's fun to coach. We have kids that I don't have to fight them every day. I haven't had to raise my voice maybe a handful of times. Uh, I didn't have to every day wake up and worry, are they doing <coughs> – I'm sorry. Are they doing the right thing? Um, you know, are they, are they taking care of business? And that's no fun to coach. I, I wanted guys that wanted to be there, wanted to do things right, wanted to, wanted to get better and improve. And, um, you know, it was hard. It was difficult. But, um, you know, we, our, our staff should get some credit. They stayed the course. We did. And now we got, you know, we got some guys that uh, have made the strides to help us get here. We got two in the back. Myron Mack of ESPN at Illinois. Bruce, you met a guy named Jim Fan, and he became uh, somewhat of an advisor, uh, I believe. Just wondering how he's helped you throughout your career, um, especially in some of those more difficult times. I actually talked to him this morning um, and uh, got some little ideas about some themes. I always try to have themes, quotes, things for him. Thank you. Um, you know, actually, it started at, uh, at Southern Illinois. We, we brought him in kind of before he even got onto the scene, and he, was, he talked to our guys and latched on to us and did a great job. And you're always looking for motivational guys, speakers that can – Help the you know the players, help the coaches, uh, you know, take them to a new level, and and he does a great job with that. And uh, you know he he texts me off and on during the year, sees things, watch our games, gives me little tips, ideas, and uh, and I love that stuff. And I think our players buy into it also. You know, some ways to focus on on you know the game, but also the the week, the season, whatever it may be. Third row on the left. Coach, um, Kansas State basketball, much of its history has been forgotten by the nation. Four Final Fours, but the truth is the last one was 54 years ago. What, what would this mean for the program uh, and kind of etching your name and this team's uh, history into that legacy? Well, 
it would be special. There's no doubt. Uh, you know, it, it, when you talk about some of the greatest coaches in the history of college basketball, obviously Tex Winnard, uh, Coach Hartman, Jack Gardner, uh, Cotton Fitzsimmons. I mean, just it's amazing. And I don't, and when people come to our practice facility and walk in and see those guys, they I don't think people realize it. And, and as you said, it's it, it was a while ago. And and you know, people you know, we'll say names of we'll say Michael Jordan to our players or to young kids. They don't even know who he is. And, and you know, that's, that's how things change. But, um, but it, it, it would be great. I mean, you saw the emotion of Ernie Barrett yesterday. And, and you know, he's a special man. Mr. K-State uh, done so much for the university. And um, obviously, he, uh, he, it would be you just he's one that's alive and, and experienced and been part of it. For him, uh, uh, it would be special, there's no doubt, and for our program. Let's go to Charles and then to Vahe. <laughs> Charles Odom with Associated Press. Um, is there one player that you can point to who set the example for the defensive toughness that, that this team has? And if not one player, is there one factor that you attribute that to? Uh, Barry Brown, there's no doubt about it. Uh, you know, when he was a freshman, I, I said, who's going to be our defensive stopper? And he, he's very stubborn. Um, he's a little bit confident, overconfident. Uh, but he said, "I am going to be coach," and 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 he got he got cooked a little bit as a freshman. Uh, got better last year. Um, you know, he was one of the tops in the in the in the nation in steals a year ago, and then this year he kind of has taken it on. Uh, you know, just to be the the stopper. He hasn't probably gotten as many steals because he's been locked in on so many guys. Uh, you just look at the tournament, Big East player. Uh, of the year, Marcus Foster, Lyles, American East player last night, Alexander, you know, SEC, I think MVP at a tournament, if I'm right. Uh, you know, he, and then even last night, we had to switch him on Knox. So uh, he's, he's been the leader. Uh, Xavier is, is really taking some pride as the season's gone on and being a stopper. Um, we've convinced him of that. And, and then the other guys that just have kind of bought into it. Vahe. Bruce, did you did you come up with your pregame quote sort of yet for this game? And 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 a side question too. I wonder if you could just describe what was going on with Cam last night. You guys were on the court. You had both arms around him, and you're laughing. It was kind of a tense time. You got him laughing. I just wonder on each of those. Well, just you know, with Cam, I, I just trying to get him to calm down. He had he kind of messed up on a defensive side of it. Didn't run a play. Got going fast. I just said, "Hey, this you got to calm down. Just relax. You got to smile. You got to enjoy it. You know, we're not mad at you. We just want you to do well and do what you're supposed to. Stay, stay calm and poised. And and you know, I, I guess I got him to smile a little bit. And 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 he, you know, he's made some big plays. Obviously, he's not where he should be or could be, and and where he was. But uh, you know, we keep telling him he can help us. And and he, you know, he's done great things to help us to be here." Uh, and then, you know, with the theme, I actually, I was talking to uh, Jim this morning on the, on the phone a little bit, just, and we always, the coaches, we kind of think of some ideas, but for tonight, we'll probably talk about, you know, mostly is really don't worry about yesterday, don't worry about tomorrow, worry about today, and, and preparing, uh, you know, we've talked all this last stretch about uh, your, your body taking care of it, your, your mind, your preparation, and then your heart playing for your teammates. And, and that's kind of what we've kind of stuck with as a general thing over this last month. Front row here, Mark. Bruce, Mark Bradley from the Atlanta Journal and Constitution. You've, you're a nine now um, in the Elite Eight. And uh, in 2002, you were Southern Illinois in the, in the Sweet 16. And, but you also had the, the number one team in the country in 2005 that, that was very close to being undefeated. When you when you're on a run like this, is it more fun if you're you're the one that is not supposed to be here than the one that is? Well, I think both of them are obviously enjoyable just to advance each time with each group. Uh, but it, you know, there's no doubt when you you like Southern Illinois for what we did. You know, just to win one and then to win two and then to go. I mentioned the other day we walk in there and it's it's UConn, it's Maryland, it's Kentucky, and Southern Illinois. And, and, you know, our guys were all giggling when we were running out for practice. I said, what's the matter? They said, Coach, look at those banners. And they just – they said, we don't belong here. But we had – two of those guys were at our Charlotte games. We had a, guy, a couple here last night. And they just said, make sure that they don't get tight. 
that they enjoy it, they, they're ready to play, and, and I, I thought our guys were very, very focused. And, uh, you know, the run with Illinois, I, just amazing how our guys stayed the course with all the attention. I mean, every day we had this many people, uh, you know, doing stories about us because we had a chance to be undefeated. And uh, I know the, the week that I said I am not going to allow any media on, I got hugs, kisses, they, you know, into the practice facility. And they were so happy because they just wanted to relax and be young men. So, uh, but they, all, the, all the runs are special, there's no doubt. Time for one last question. Alex Scarborough with ESPN. I was just asking, wondering, Coach, with Barry, how did you come across him on the recruiting trail and how has he sort of uh, developed for you? Well, our, our, our staff does a great job of finding guys and uh, we don't have a great big population base in Kansas and we got one pretty good player from there. Uh, if you look at the rosters of Kansas, Wichita and us, there aren't a lot of Kansas kids. So, in, and they've had some great history in Kansas basketball, Kansas City, Wichita basketball, but it, runs in cycles um, <coughs> excuse me uh, it runs in cycles and uh, it's been a little bit of a down cycle hopefully it'll pick up but so you got to go all over the place and uh, Barry was actually the eighth man on his AAU team but he was on a team with kids that went to Duke Louisville North Carolina I mean all, all the top kids and and we just appreciated how he was patient uh, he stuck with that team because uh, a lot of guys if you're eighth man and you're good you're going to another team and he stuck with them, and, and, and when he got his chance, he always did good things. And, and that summer, he got, in, got away from his team one weekend, and he was the leading scorer at o, the Olin Depot camp, and there was no doubt in our mind that we wanted him, and, and Coach Frazier did a good job with him and his dad. And, and then when other people came in, uh, some of the bigger schools, the local schools, uh, you know, he already committed to us, but, you know, he uh, – the dad and said, hey, where were you guys before? These guys have been here the whole time. So we appreciate their loyalty and glad to have him and glad it's worked out for them. Thank you very much, Coach. Yep. Thank you.
Hey, Ray. Five kids that are up here will not be in the lobby. They'll go to breakout rooms after the yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, good. Can you hear them all? <laughs> I think Drake is the only one that I hear. Yeah. What's that? Probably.
Just to remind everybody of the uh, process here before Loyola, Loyola uh, arrives in the room, this press conference is supposed to start at 3.40 and last until 4.20. Uh, the student athletes will be, in, will be on the table until 4. So uh, we want to direct the questions to them first. Uh, their locker room is open 3.40 to 4 p.m. for the rest of the members of the team. And then these five student athletes, when they're dismissed, they'll go to the breakout rooms, uh, which go from 4.05 to 4.20. Okay, we'll get started with uh, Loyola. Uh, we'll go to questions for student athletes, but first, uh, Coach, if you could give us a couple of thoughts for today, and then we'll go to the student athlete questions. Just um, excited for our guys. I mean, they're they're ready. We just had a great uh, workout, um, and uh, same kind of prep. You got a one day to get ready for Kansas State. We're we got a ton of respect for Kansas State. Um, we've. They've guarded as well as anybody in this tournament. Um, they, I think they're giving up 33% in three games. Um, so it's uh, really a lot of respect for how hard they play, um, especially how they're guarding. Okay, questions for the student athletes. We'll start way on the left. Uh, Tom Martin with KCTV. This is for Ben and Clayton. Clayton, I know you mentioned you had some friends who were Jayhawk fans back home. Any K-State connections for either of you, friends, family, et cetera? Clayton, why don't you go first? Uh, yeah, I mean, we, me and Ben both know a lot of people from our high school that, that go to K-State. Um, we have a lot of friends that go there, um, people who we were really close with in high school. So, um, yeah, we, we've definitely gotten some texts and, and calls from, from people who, who go to K-State for sure. Oh, I mean, they, they're pulling. I mean, they, I think that they're kind of pulling for us just because of, our, <laughs> just because of our, our relationship. Um, at least I hope they are. <laughs> they might be saying that to my face. I don't know if they actually believe it or not. But, um, yeah, it's, it's all in good, in good, good nature. Ben? Yeah, I mean, I, I've received lots of texts as well. And, you know, <clears throat> I got a couple that were, like, you know, cheering for you to win this game, but if K-State wins, then uh, I don't know if I can, I can pull for you, like joking around, but um, it's all in good nature. We got a lot of, lot of good support from back home, and, and um, it's been really good to, to see um, all the people reaching out to us. Let's go to the fifth row in the middle. C.L. Brown with the Fieldhouse. Uh, this is for Dante and whoever else wants to chime in if you feel like it. Um, I was curious with the 63 title team if 
how, how much ownership do you take in, in that title for the school? Like, is that something, if you got into some trash talking, would you bring up the fact that this happened in history, or is it so far removed that you guys never even really think about it? Dante? I mean, when you talk about, uh, you know, having pride for your school and uh, tradition comes up uh, in conversations, you know, obviously that's something that, uh, you know, Loyola has the only championship in Illinois, and a lot of people forget that, but, uh, I mean, we, we take a lot of pride in that. Uh, it's, it's, that's something that doesn't go away ever, you know, obviously. So, yeah, I think we take a lot of pride in tradition, and our history is very important. So, Marcus, why don't you, you got that too? Go ahead. Uh, I mean, yeah, just like, like Dante said, you know, it's, it's great tradition. But uh, I know we, we always talked about, you know, the 63 team always comes in and, and always try to talk to us and, you know, give us the support. They, they, they always joke around and say, uh, they said that they're, we're better than them that they, uh, they, they have support for us and we're happy to talk to them and we're happy to have them along this run. And uh, like you said, it's tradition. And uh, I mean, we're looking forward to the, to the uh, next challenge. Here in the middle, Charles. Just to follow up on that, any player who, who wants to jump in, what, uh, has there been anything they've told you in this, in this tournament that has been useful or has been a, a motivating kind of thing for you guys? Same two, or is there any? Yeah, I'll go. Okay. <laughs> Um, I don't know if they've told us, you know, anything on this tournament, but I mean, obviously they're always around. Uh, they come to practices and stuff like that. So it's just cool to see those guys kind of around and that they're still connected with us. And uh, you know, it's not even really sometimes about basketball. It's just kind of about stories that they have and and things that they've experienced in their life. Not not necessarily just about basketball, just about their life and how they grew up and stuff like that. So. When I came here, it was definitely pretty cool to see those guys around and uh, just kind of learn history from them and uh, just take, take what I wanted from them. Let's go uh, sixth row on the right. David Hoffman, Chicago Tribune. Dante, as a kid growing up in Chicago, did you have an awareness of Illinois basketball and what Bruce Weber did with that program and the success they had even going as far back as 2005? Oh uh, yeah, um, I mean obviously uh, growing up in Danville, Illinois, which is very close to you know Champaign Urbana, and the U of I campus. Obviously, uh, I was you know very aware, you know a big fan of Deer Brown and all those guys, and that was kind of a big thing, you know, back when they were going up against North Carolina, you know, on their great run, and, you know that that was basically you know the school, you know, for me growing up right next to U of I. So yeah, obviously I'm aware of the tradition, you know, the two one seven, you know, another another guy from two one seven. So yeah, over by the table on the left. Stephen Dial, 41 Action News, Kansas City, Clay and Ben. Talk about three Blue Valley Northwest students in this. The exposure for Blue Valley Northwest, Overland Park, the Kansas City area, just in general, from two teams that, I mean, to be honest, people, a lot of people didn't expect. Talk about the exposure for the area back home. Clay, you want to start? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's obviously really cool for us. Um, I, I think we're we're making Coach Fritz a popular guy right now. He uh, he he's been joking with us that that we that we're making him famous. So uh, I don't know. It's been really fun. Um, it speaks to um, a lot of what Coach Fritz has done with that program, Blue Valley Northwest. I mean, he's he's um, I mean has to be one of the best best high school basketball coaches uh, in the country. So um, I just I'm I'm glad that that me and Ben are getting to experience this as well as Mason um, over there at K State. Um, we have a real real good relationship with him, and I'm um, just happy for him um, that he's getting to experience this too. Ben, yeah, and uh, just to go off that, I mean it's we're super blessed that that Fritz put together that that team back in whatever third grade, fourth grade, and. Uh, we came together and, and ended up at Blue Valley Northwest and, and got a chance to, you know, be, be taught such an advanced level of basketball at a young, young age. And, and um, you know, he instilled so many values and, um, you know, way, intensity and just the, the right way to play for me and Clay growing up. And it was it was just great. So it's it's good to see that he's kind of, you know, getting in the spotlight a little bit. He's, he's came down to all the games and, you know, he's, he's so happy for us. and. Um, you know, it's, it's really special. It speaks a lot to how great of a coach he was that, um, you know, me, Mason, and Clay all down here uh, playing in the Elite Eight. Fourth row here on the right. Steve Greenberg from the Chicago Sun-Times. This is for Dante and for Ben. You guys have reached a, a crossroads that most college athletes don't get to, which is that if you win, it's like basketball immortality. But if you lose, your, your Loyola careers are over. Uh, what, what must that feel like emotionally? How does that, how does that feel today? Dante? 
Uh, you know, obviously, uh, we're, you know, very happy and you know, fortunate to be in this position. Uh, but, you know, we, we don't take any of these moments for granted, you know. Uh, obviously, you know, being seniors, uh, me and Ben, you know, I, I've been here since day one with Ben, you know, from freshman year to, you know, now, you know, we, we've came a very long way uh, together. So, obviously, to be here in our in year four and, you know, we're in the Elite Eight and, you know, a week, a week from now, you know, college basketball will be over. Uh, you know, we don't take these moments for granted. You know, we want to leave it all out there and, you know, do whatever we can do to help the team win. Ben? Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely um, a lot of you know big time moments and um, just being in this position, like Dante said, we're just super grateful to be here and and we're grateful for all the hours that you know our teammates have put in, our coaches put in, and and um, you know we're we're not necessarily thinking about you know basketball immortality or you know what it means to get to a certain point. We just want to you know win the next game and we're focused on. You know what we got to do uh, daily and in, in our preparation and and all the little things that we got to do leading up to, to to winning the next game and and you know I mean that's just the, the main focus is, is taking care of the next one. Fourth row here on the left. Uh, Nick Schultz, Loyal Phoenix. Uh, Marcus obviously hit the big shot last night. Your first year eligibility. Can you just talk about uh, your journey to Loyola and getting to this point, like from high school and everything? <coughs> Um, well, first off, I want to I want to thank Coach Moses for you know uh, recruiting me after I decided to transfer. Um, that was a really uh, good moment for me um, coming to my official visit at Loyola and uh, just being there. And, and when I first got there, it just felt like family, and uh, that was the main thing for me. Uh, I felt like at home, so that's when I decided to come in. You know, the journey's been long. Um, you know, uh, unfortunately, we didn't have we didn't have any postseason tournaments last year. Uh, but, you know, we had a real good team. We had real good heart. Uh, you know, I was trying to push the guys in practice all last year. And, um, you know, it was a long journey, you know, for any red shirt, for any uh, player that has to sit out. You know, it's kind of rough mentally. But, you know, you just stick with it. And, uh, and now this year, you know, I'm just fortunate and blessed, you know, be with these guys. This is a special group of guys right here. And, you know, we've been doing this all year, just one game at a time. And um, coaches instilled good, good culture in us. And, uh, he's just a, a really good coach, and I'm, I'm really happy to be playing for him. And uh, uh, I'm just happy to be in this position. You know, in the Elite Eight now, this is amazing. You know, just my uh, my first year back. Uh, I can't believe it. Back-to-back -back NCAA uh, appearances. It's amazing. We got time for some more questions for the student athletes. Raise your hand, and we'll get a microphone to you, Steve. Here on the right, second row. Yeah, it's uh, Steve Hummer from the Atlanta Journal Constitution. Uh, Clayton, I don't know. I, I guess uh, you and you and Dean were back-to-back -back, uh, Gatorade Players of the Year, right, in Kansas. Uh, how well do you know each other as that? And and, and uh, along with that, uh, why are there so many Kansas Kansas people in this tournament at this stage? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, I think it speaks to Kansas high school basketball. I mean, I think there's a lot of good players in in the area. Um, I mean. Dean was a really good player in high school, and um, we don't know each other barely at all. Uh, so I had somebody tweet a picture at me. Um, there was like a all-state um, banquet thing when I was like a sophomore or junior, and it, I didn't even remember that we were both on it at, at the same time. But there was like we were standing right next to each other in the picture, me and me and Dean. So um, that was kind of that was kind of funny. But we we don't really know each other very well at all. Um, but I mean, I think it just goes to show that there's there's good it, it, Kansas high school basketball may, might be a little underrated, and um, I think that uh, it might deserve a little bit more respect. Fourth row here on the right, Clayton. Uh, little detail, kind of, but I noticed after the last game, you did a TV interview on the court, and you turned, and a number of K State players just came up to you and congratulated you. Uh, were those guys you? New or was that just they were swept up in the ending and happy for you and all that? Uh, well, so one of them was was Mason Schoen and I and me and Ben played high school basketball with him. We were, the, he he went to Blue Valley Northwest with us, but he was a year older than us. Um, we won a state championship together, so um, we obviously have a really close relationship with him, um, and we're we're happy for him to, that we're in the situation. 
Um, and the other one was was Ahmad Wainwright. Um, we grew up playing against him around the area in Kansas City, and um, his older brother Ishmael played at Baylor, and um, we all we all know each other. We all work out in the same gyms all the time in, in Kansas City. So, um, I mean, I, it, we we have mutual respect for each other, and um, I think that we're all happy that that we're in this in this like experiencing this at the same time. Let's go fifth row in the middle. New Bias Move on Sport News. I guess kind of probably following up on his question, but what will it be like particularly playing against guys who you played against in high school, now seeing them on this level on the biggest stage you guys have ever been on on both sides? Is this for Clayton? Clayton, yes. Okay. Um, I mean, it'll be cool. I mean, I, I don't think, I think once the ball goes up, I mean, it's, it's a basketball game. We're going to be competing, trying to win the game. Um, but I mean, obviously, we we know uh, a couple of the guys over there, and it, we know what they can do. Um, so I mean, I, I think we'll be talking to our guys about about the guys we know on their team, and I'm sure they'll be talking about us over there. So, uh, but I, like I said, I think once the ball goes up, it's, uh, it's a competition, and we're going to try to win the game. Ben. Yeah, I mean, I think it's definitely a lot of mutual respect. You know, we we uh, we kind of understand, you know, where each other has been and and a lot of the the hard work that that we, each other has put in. You know, uh, like Clay said, we've spent a lot of time working out in the same gyms and and uh, for a long time. I mean, the first time we played, we played in an open gym against Ish and uh, Ahmad probably in like fourth grade and that was the first time I met them and we and we like guest played on tournaments together and stuff like that so it's, it's cool to see you know how far we've all came and, and and it's a good you know mutual respect for the way that you know each each of us has worked on our game to, to get to this uh, stage in the lead eight we've got time for one more for the student athletes if somebody has one <clears throat> raise your hand okay folks breakout room time thank you very much Okay, let's continue with uh, questions for Coach Moser. Let's, Jeff, let's start with you and then back a row. Jeff Schultz of the Atlanta Constitution. Um, Coach, this whole upstart thing obviously has been a theme throughout the tournament, particularly in the South region. But there's going to be at least three low seeds in the Elite Eight, maybe maybe even four potentially. As a guy who's coached for a while, I mean, should are you surprised by this? Should anybody be surprised by this? And um, if not, what has sort of fed into this, do you think, moving forward? You know, I'm, I'm not surprised, you know, watching, being a fan, you know, and a coach for so long, it's, it's, it's madness. There's things that happen. I think there's a lot of parity um, in the game, and uh, I love it for our league. You know, there was a lot of talk that we weren't going to get in if we didn't win the tournament, and we know in, in the Missouri Valley how good a league it is from top to bottom, and for us, um, to get in here, I just think I think it's going to spark conversation about this. And I know I know the committees have such a hard job. Trust me, I know I know people on the committee. It is a really really hard job. And uh, but it was um, it, it's I'm not surprised there's low seeds in here. I mean things happen. Um, there's a, there's a lot of parity, and especially when you you know you get a group and we're kind of hitting. We we got a group that really believes, you know, and and um, they're finding ways to win, and things happen this time of year. And uh, especially when you get a group that just uh, believes and has, has, has made some really clutch shots down the stretch. You said it should spark conversation. You said it should spark conversation, maybe or could. What what should the conversation be? Well, about you know, the the system. I mean, I think it's tough. I mean, we, there was so much talk that we weren't even in the conversation um, to get in, and we felt that you know. We won our league by four games. Um, you know, it's an amazing stat with Clayton Custer. We're 29 and two with Clayton Custer because he was injured five games. And uh, I just think it's I, we I, we have a lot of respect. I think there's a lot of leagues that are really good. Now I understand it. I understand that it's a it's a hot topic um, with this. And I and trust me, I'm the first one to say this. The committee has a really hard job, but I think it's I. I, I I'm very proud of our team, what we've done. Now we've gotten in, and we've shown that there's um, that we belong here, and, and this team did. And uh, 
it's hard to imagine if we didn't win the tournament, you know, and not get this opportunity and get this stage. I know it's a reality of the way the tournament is, but um, I think that, um, you know, the first part of the question was, am I surprised that there's low seeds advancing? And my answer is no. I'm not surprised that low, no teams are advancing. Got a couple more on this side of the room, and then we'll go to the left. Porter, I'm sure there were lots of milestones along the way that, that you would know about. But it, it's, it's seven years for it to, to hit in a quantifiably huge way. How much has it meant for you to have that time to build it your way? You know, like, like you know, you know from being there in Chicago, it was a grassroots rebuild. Um, but the dynamics changed, you know, when you jumped to the Missouri Valley, when, it, when we jumped. And uh, I think I, the first year we took a step back. And then that second year in the Valley, we won 24 games. We won the CBI tournament. And we've just kind of been building and getting our arrow going up. And I think, um, I, ho I hope, we're an example of, of, you know, it takes time. I get it. I've been there. You know, fans, administrations, they want it so fast. And it's tough. Culture is when your young guys come in and the older guys have the habits of what you want, of what you want to build. Culture is about the accumulation of a bunch of habits. And when you take over a program, if it's down, then you have a whole locker room of guys you didn't recruit. And it's going to take some time. Though that your first recruiting class comes in, it's going to take some time. We really started to turn the corner when Dante and Ben were freshmen, and those seniors were a guy named Christian Thomas, a kid named Joe Christman, a kid named London Dukubu. Really, really tough kids. And those young guys came in, and like this is how it's going to be. This is how you're going to hack off the floor. This is how this is how hard we work. This is how hard we invest. And now look. Now they come in. Now Cameron Crutwig, Lucas Williamson, Christian Negron, they come in, and these guys are seniors. This is all they know now is our culture. It takes time. So the feeling of, of building it and really getting it to this point the right way with culture, I'm blessed, and, and you know, that the administration and the fan base were steadfast on this is how we want. We're not going to bend on the academics at Loyola. That's first and foremost. And the type of character and the person it is at Loyola. We're not going to bend on that. So we were on the same page. And that, that, is, that is such a great example of, of trust in, in, the, in, the, in your fan base and the community of doing it the right way. One more here on the right. David the Hosh, Chicago Tribune. Porter, what do you remember about the time you would played uh, against Illinois and, and Bruce Weber? And how would you describe your relationship with Bruce over the years? Um, no, Bruce is a, is a great coach, great guy. I've, I've known him over the years, um, Illinois guy. Um, what I remember is the one game we played there, and I, I, I know, I, trust me, it sticks in my crawl, that game. I was at Illinois State. We were just taking over that, that team, and we were in last place when we got there. And we played the team with D. Brown, Darren Williams, Luther Head, Roger Powell, Augustine. They were loaded. Um, not that I look at lines, but it was probably a 25-point underdog. But um, we went in there, and we had a shot to win it at the, at the buzzer. We missed it. It goes into overtime. Darren Williams wasn't supposed to play. It was one of those things, yeah, he's not going to play. He plays, and he has like 29 against us, and we lost in overtime. So that was um, – and I think at that time, I don't think Illinois State had won at Illinois ever, or it's been umpteen years. But I remember that game vividly. They were a great team, and um, – we, they, uh, Darren Williams went off and, and had a great game. So that, that's the, that's the, that was my experience of that game. But uh, Bruce has got a ton of respect um, all around the coaching profession. Um, uh, just always been from his days at Southern, from Illinois to here, just phenomenal uh, team defense. Um, they're physical. Um, they don't make it easy. They make it hard. So a ton of respect for what he's done at, at every stop of his, of his journey. We've got three or four here on the left side of the room. We'll start with second row. Coach Wyatt Thompson with Kansas State Radio. Congratulations Thank to get you. to this point. Uh, uh, my question, I guess, is about Clayton. You mentioned being 29-2 and two with him in the lineup. Obviously, he has wonderful skill, but, but probably some intangibles, too. I'm curious as to, A, what it's like coaching him, and could you tell us a little bit about, as a player, what stands out to you about him? It's... Um 
it's a kind of, you know, all these guys are, are coaches, dreams kind of kids. I mean, it's by design. That's how we, it's some of the character we recruit. But, you know, Clayton's one of those guys um, that it's like, a, it's like with how they talk about a great quarterback, you know, in the huddle. When you're in that huddle, you, you hear offensive linemen in other positions say, oh, you just know we're going to march down that field because the confidence that he instills in everything. That's the way they kind of feel with Clayton. You know, Clayton has that ball, and he's leading, leading us. Um, you kind of you have that comfort level that he's just got a high IQ. Um, you talk about off the floor, I mean, he's an academic All-American. He's a first-class citizen. Um, after practice, always getting his shots up. You don't have to coach. And, I, and I'll, I, some of the, I can say this about all these guys. I don't have to coach energy. I don't have to coach effort. Um, we can coach the, the, the fundamentals and the detail of a game. Um, and those... That's, that's a big reason why I think we're making a step forward. You know, our, our time and energy is focused in on the culture of energy and effort is already instilled. Um, Clayton is one of those guys. He's got, he's got a winning mentality, as a lot of them do. Um, he, uh, he, he's about winning. This is a great statement about Clayton Custer. They, the, the first game, Dante hit the big shot. And he was up here humbly saying, you know, any one of these guys could have taken that shot. The next night against Tennessee, Clayton hit that shot. He was humbly up here saying the same thing. And then we had a week where Clayton got a ton of hype. I mean, we're on, we're on campus, we had, a, we had a welcome back party, Clayton was, you know, hit the shot to go to the Sweet 16. And he's in the position to do it again. And a lot of people were like, I'm gonna go get that again. And he drew the help, drew the corner and kicked it. And it was just a winning play. And then Marcus was the one that stepped up and hit the shot. He drew the, uh, with three minutes left. Clay did the same thing. We drew a little play for him, drew the baseline, turned, found Dre for a shot. Didn't try to force it. If he has it, he takes it. If he doesn't, he knows how to spray it. He's, he's about winning instead of like, I got to get mine. Stay on the left side of the room toward the back. Uh, Daryl Moody, Nevada Appeal. Porter, if I can just ask you, I didn't get a chance to get into your press conference uh, the other day, but uh, right before the three-pointer that ended up being the game winner, uh, Nevada's two fouls down with fouls to give. Were you at all surprised they didn't foul you to get you to the line before that three-pointer? No, because, you know, he was in the same boat I was. You have, you, have, you have to make a split decision. There was a point there where we're like, should we, you know, you start to think, should I call a timeout? You know, this is a big possession. There was a six or seven second uh, a difference. If they foul, then you're pretty much saying, I'm, you know, they're gonna, they're gonna, you were going to make, try to make them miss free throws because they're going to foul, foul, foul again until you get it because the shot clock resets, right? So the, uh, that I wasn't, you know, that they rolled with their defense, you know, and they can score so fast. For me, I decided not to take a timeout because then you have to inbound the ball knowing they have some fouls and they could be denying everything and make, I mean, they, don't, they could hold, grab, do whatever because they have fouls to give. And, then, and we'd have to get it in bounds two or three times, which you were vulnerable to turnovers. So you have a small window to make that decision. And, you know, at, at that time, um, so, you know, I, I probably would have done the same thing. You're gambling on your defense. So they get a stop. They got seven or eight seconds, and they're a, a fast transition team. So, um, you know, he's, he's a, a really good coach. And I'm telling you, you know, Nevada was one of the hardest teams I've had to scout against in a long time. And uh, so it's just one of those things they can go either way. Um, you know, Marcus made the shot. And then I knew I wanted to call a quick timeout because they, they, they just blow and go. And you want to at least get, you know, because they could score in two seconds. Um, so that was just kind of my thought process at the end of not calling a timeout because with fouls to give, their length switch and everything, you got to inbound it two or three times in a row, which, which was prone for a turnover if, if something went wrong. Stay on the left side of the room, fifth row. Alex Scarborough with ESPN, talking about the preparation for Nevada. I was struck going in the locker room, all the posters with the plays all over the wall. I'd, I'd never seen anything like that. What, what goes into that work? What's the benefit? And, and how do you sort of turn around that much information in what's a really short period of time uh, heading into tomorrow? You know, I think we underestimate the youth on how much they can absorb. You know, some people have that philosophy of, you know, I don't want to give them too much to overload. Our guys embrace it. But in terms of that, the way that locker room looks, um, you know, you could, you could rewind the clock to every locker room at St. Louis with Rick Majerus. You could rewind that clock 
to Utah with every locker room, Rick, Rick Majerus. I took that from coach. We, we, we travel with it. We have a war room. We put everything up. We travel with it in the locker room. The guys embrace it if they're sitting. I don't know if it's through osmosis or anything. It's just if you can pick up a competitive advantage on stopping a play here or there. But this group embraces um, preparation. You know, you can hear some of the things they say. They embrace it um, with that. Some people do think it's – some people's philosophy think it's overkill. I, I understand. I mean, there's a million ways to skin a cat. Um, that's something that we uh, – these guys embrace. And in terms of how that locker room looked, which you're referring to, uh, it had Rick Majerus all over it. Dan, toward the back. Hey, Porter, Dan Walk in USA Today. Just given all the controversy around college basketball this year, how – Maybe how much of a relief maybe is it that you recruit at this level, you know, and typically you guys aren't involved in the top 100 kids and some of the stuff that goes along with that. And secondly, do you think maybe that is part of why the country's kind of embraced this run that you guys are on? Because it's kind of seems a little bit different than maybe what some of the other top programs do to build their teams. You know, I can't speak on, you know, about the, how the country feels or not. I, 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 I I love how it, our team's been embraced because I think we play the right way. I think we share the ball. I think we're tough. I, um, and I, I think they've embraced that, that mentality. Um, you know, in terms of recruiting, um, I'll be honest, I want to recruit top 100 players. Um, I do. I mean, you name one coach that says they don't want to recruit. I want, I want to get those players. Um, we're going to continue with that. Um, and, you know, I think we're getting very good players. And I, I do think, you know, we've never been a team of, you know, recruiting a number because it's rated this for your fan base. You know, and um, we've gotten guys that fit what we do. Um, but trust me, I mean, I'm, we're going to continue to recruit at a high level. But, um, you know, but we believe there's a certain way to do it. You know, we're going to obviously follow the rules and, do it the right way, and uh, you, you'd be you, you, that, that's something that we all want to recruit at a high level in those players. It's not because we don't want to go down that path. That's, that's, that's not the case. It, these kids, there's so many good kids out there. Um, there's so many good coaches out there doing it the right way, and uh, we all want the same thing. Let's go to the middle of the room, Charles. Charles Odom with Associated Press. It's very unusual to have four players sitting on the front row from a championship team of 55 years ago or whatever. I've heard the players talk about what it means to them. But for you, what kind of resource is that, not only for your players, but for you? And, and what do you think it would mean to them to have you guys continue this run? Well, in 2013, I was uh, fortunate enough to ride their coattails to the White House. President Obama had us in the White House for the 50th anniversary for the Game of Change. And I got to spend a couple days with them as we traveled to Washington, D.C. And I was just blown away by their character, about the stories they told, just sitting there listening to the whole story behind the Game of Change. I love that this run is sparking the renewed conversation of what that team meant to our country and integration and to hear the stories firsthand from them and to hear the brotherhood that they had, the black guys, the white guys, everyone together, it was a brotherhood, it was a high character. They were, um, they embraced the Loyola education and it just solidified and they, about what we were trying to do. And I said from there, the past is a part of our future. Um, and that 63 team had zero ego. They were never like, you know, hey, you'll never be us, you know, we're the bow in our chest on this. They've had open arms trying to be role models, mentors, whatever it is, to our guys from the moment I stepped on campus. And you appreciate that. They're about the right thing, the right way. Um, they paved a path for so many of the student athletes to come after them that I hope this story to the youth is being told and told again that they know what the game of change and the Loyola 63 team meant to our country and the world of college basketball. Back on the right side. Porter, um, how would you describe the level of surprise maybe your players have now? Because they seem a little bit more matter of fact today. I don't know if the novelty has worn off or they just have gotten used to being the team that has maybe opened some eyes. You know, it's uh, Andy, Kat said that to me. We, we were talking in the locker room and he's like, I've never seen a team so chill after they went to the you know, Elite Eight. And it's, 
trust me, these guys are bouncing off walls. They're so excited. They're embracing it. Um, but it's just kind of been who we are about next game. They've wanted more. Um, I told this story to some, some press yesterday. When we won a, a share of the conference title, the Missouri Valley, at Evansville, so we knew we were co-champs with three games left, and we were co at least co-champs. And we got, I, did, I did a courtside interview. I come in the locker room, and it was just, and I'm like, you guys, we're, we're co they, they're like, no. They didn't even want to celebrate. It was like, we want the word co out of that, that equation. And it's been like that every step of the way. You know, when we got into the tournament, it was like we didn't want to just be here. And it's, it, it's, it's just kind of the way they are. Um, trust me, we've had, they're, they're bouncing around like little kids. They're so excited, but they just have this edge to them that they believe and they want more. They want more. They're, they enjoy the moment. I mean, I'm, some, of these, some of these team meals back at the hotel after these wins are priceless. When everybody's not around, it's just us a couple hours after, you know, these three wins and uh, after our, our win in the conference tournament. And just those moments are unbelievable, like little kids. And the next day, it's like, like today. It was all about Kansas State, where it is. And it's just kind of how they're wired um, with that. Got time for a couple of more. Raise your hand and we'll get a microphone to you. Second row here on the left. I would like to ask coach about Rick Majerus. Obviously a great coach, but I'm curious as to maybe the two or three things that you took from him more than anything else in developing as a coach for yourself. You know, he, the way he taught it, he, he was a teacher. He embraced being a teacher from his days. And the, 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 my college coach, Tony Brony, um, was a teacher. And that era of coaches started out, you'll hear stories, I started out in grade school, I, I, then I started in high school and I was a teacher. I remember Coach Brony getting mad at me because I went from playing for him at Creighton to coaching at Texas A&M. And he's like, you guys skip a step in the youth these days. And it's so true. He's like, I had to teach, I had to do this, I had to drive the high school van. And that era was, 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 was embraced being a teacher of the game. And working for him and then working for Coach Majerus, the attention to detail was off the rails. It was meticulous about teaching. He loved practice. And I've embraced that. I mean, now that I, honest to God, coach, head coaches, boosters, fans, players, assistant coaches love game day. <laughs> head coaches don't love game day as much as them. We, you know, we love practice. And uh, so I took that from him. Sitting in a boardroom with, with Coach Majerus, for a couple days preparing for a, a game was, was like nothing else. The way he looked at the film and talked about, you know, this, that, stopping this, what could we do, how do you do that, and then watching him game plan and his mind work was, was terrific. Um, and, you know, I, I think that was some of the things. And then building it the right way, I, I, it, it kind of solidified, you know, what I've always tried to do is get kids who want to win, get kids who win. Coach Majerus, anybody who played for him and knows him, he had an affinity for post players. You know, you, you look at it, you look at his teams at Utah, I mean, he was stacked with big players. And I, so I'd bring him a, a post player, I'd talk to him in the recruiting process, and his first question wasn't, it was he athletic? How high did he jump? What could he do? It was, does he love the game? That was his first question Rick would always ask. He was, because if, if the big loves to play, I can help him get better. And he always wanted to know that. That's why he loved Cameron Crutwig. Coach Majerus would love Cameron Crutwig. The kid loves to play. But I took those, a lot of those things from Coach. That's all the time we have. Thank you, Coach. Thank you.